major breaking news in the classified documents case against Donald Trump. A trial date has now been set. The stage now set for federal court appearances as he runs for the White House. CNN senior legal affairs correspondent Paula Reed joins us now. So, Paula, this is certainly not the trial date that the special counsel's office was hoping for. What more can you tell us? Well, at least it's a trial date because defense attorneys had argued that it was too soon to even put a date on the calendar. Or how the central tension in this case right now, the central conflict between the defense attorneys and prosecutors is over timing. Prosecutors, including Jack Smith, have said they want a, quote, speedy trial, which is why they wanted to take this case before jury in December. But defense attorneys argued in court Tuesday before this same judge that it would be, quote, unfair to put the former president on trial at any time before the 2024 election. So here, the judge split the difference. She put a trial date on the calendar for the middle of May 2024. She also offered a very detailed schedule for when things need to happen. There's a lot going on in this case. It is complex. It deals with a lot of uh, classified discovery and just a lot of discovery overall. Now, former President Trump's lawyers have also noted how they have several other cases that they are working on. So she set out a detailed schedule for when she wants everything to happen. But it is possible, highly likely even, that this date could slide. Because when we were in court on Tuesday, the judge was really pressing defense attorneys to give her a little more guidance, help her understand how long it was going to take them to go through some of the discovery. They have hours and hours and hours of surveillance footage. They have tens, if not hundreds of thousands of documents to go through. And they said that they wouldn't even be able to give her that guidance until November. So I would not be surprised to see in a few months the defense attorneys try to push this back. And that's really the strategy for them, right? Get a little delay here, another little delay there, to try to push this so far into 2024 that they might be able to successfully make an argument that the former president cannot be put on trial so close to an election. But, hell, when we were in court Tuesday, this judge, she was not interested in any arguments from either side about Trump's status as a candidate. Prosecutors said, they said, look, it doesn't matter if he's a candidate. He's no longer the president. He should be treated like any other busy American. Defense attorneys really took issue with that. She basically said, I don't want to hear it. I'm focused on how long it's going to take you to do the work to get to trial. So we'll be watching to see if this sticks. But I think in November, when those lawyers have a better sense of how long it's going to take them to prepare for trial, we could see them push for at least one more delay. It'll be really fascinating to watch because any delay gets us closer and closer, of course, to November, the election. Yeah. Paula Reed, great to have you. And Kate, she made the point that she sort of split the difference between what the special counsel wanted and what Trump's team had been hoping for. She may have split the difference in terms of the calendar, but it's right smack dab in the middle of the political calendar. So a lot to watch here. And they may be now having to work on scheduling, uh, more scheduling issues if we're looking at a third indictment that could be coming. Yeah. Let's talk more about the indictment watch, the target letter that Donald Trump received uh, regarding January 6th and his efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. Joining us right now is former federal prosecutor Tim Hafey. He was the chief investigative counsel for the January 6th Congressional Com Committee. It's great to talk to you again, Tim. Um, one thing that we noticed Thank while you. everyone is waiting and anticipating that a third indictment is coming for Donald Trump, no one has yet, at least publicly, said that they have received, that we know of, no one else has received a target letter. But you do need someone else to be involved when you have a conspiracy charge um, that he could be facing. If that is a charge coming to Donald Trump, who do you think, if from your work and all of, all of the um, hours of investigative um, time that you spent on this, who do you think would be the possible co-conspirators here? Yeah, well, the select committee actually made a criminal referral, not just of President, former President Trump, but also of Rudy Giuliani, of John Eastman, of Ken Chis Chesbro, uh, and of Mark Meadows. There are certainly plenty of people, Kate, who were directly involved in what we found was an intentional multi-part plan to obstruct the joint session and prevent the transfer of power. So there are any number of people that could be included in a conspiracy. So one of the challenges for Jack Smith is, is how broad to, to charge mm -hmm. a conspiracy beyond the leader of that conspiracy, the former president. You mentioned Mark Meadows. Do you think someone necessarily had to turn on Trump with regards to, you know, with, 
in cooperate with the special counsel in order for the council to get to this point. I mean, Mark Meadows is, I would say, just take for one example. Do you, in your experience, think that he is inclined to be, cooperate with the Justice Department? Yeah, really hard to say. You know, we had a little bit of a dance with Mr. Meadows where we invited him to come and provide information to the select committee. He gave us really important information in the form of his text messages right. all the way from before the election, post January 6th. But then he wouldn't come in for an interview, and we actually referred him to the Department of Justice for potential criminal prosecution. The special counsel has leverage. The special counsel has the ability to bring criminal charges and use the, the looming prospect of charges as leverage to get people to cooperate. That's what prosecutors do in all kinds of cases. I'm not sure, Kate, whether that has happened in this matter and Mr. Meadows has assessed his culpability and provided information to the special counsel that he wouldn't provide to the select committee. But if so, that would be huge because he was right in the center of all of those prongs of this multi-pronged plan to disrupt the transfer of power. We know that the special counsel, the, the grand jury heard testimony yesterday from a Trump aide, Will Russell. Did you all speak with Will, Will Russell as part of your investigation? We did not speak to Russell. We, we heard a lot about him, but we actually did not speak to Will Russell. He was a, a body man. He was the guy that carried, you know, Tic Tacs and the comb and the Diet Cokes around for the president was sort of one of several aides that was around him. So he would have been in a position to hear conversations, uh, was in the room when things happened, and that's why the, the special counsel is interested in him. He's apparently been before the grand jury several times, and there is some reporting about privilege assertions. Um, so I'm not sure exactly where he stands, but, but uh, not surprising to me that he would be someone the special counsel would want to talk to. Tim Hafey. Tim. It would be great to have you on always and to continue to come on when, when this potential indictment comes down because no one knows the ins and outs of an investigation around January 6th better than you as the lead investigator in this for the select committee in Congress. Thanks, it. Tim.